Welcome back to HLN News Now. Still, again, so many questions concerning the tragedy, the Navy Yard shooting, and how Aaron Alexis, one of the many questions, how did he get a gun into this sensitive area? Yes, he had a legitimate ID so he could get into the building. From what we gather, he walks in with the Remington 870 12-gauge shotgun in a bag, disassembled. And there's uh, a picture of Aaron Alexis as we look at how this all unfolded. We know he bought that gun recently, bought 24 shells, total cost about $419, spent a few hours at the shooting range as well. So he was prepared. And I had a chance to talk to, as we take this a, a step further, I had a chance to talk to Greg Fry. He's a shotgun sports enthusiast. He's been working with guns uh, for years, really understands this weapon. He owns the Remington 870 12-gauge shotgun. So I is it the exact gun? No, maybe it is not. But it gives us an idea, first off, how it came into the building, disassembled. And watch how, Greg, how fast it is to disassemble, reassemble, because he went into the bathroom and then came out ready to fire. That's how we believe this went down. So let's watch this and see what we can learn from it. So show us even as you walk through this, number one, it's not hard to disassemble. Not right? hard to disassemble. I mean, you just unscrewed it, but, and like that, it's pretty much in half. Breaks into two pieces, move the barrel from the forearm, and that's it. Okay, let's move this here just a little bit, and we'll get a bag out. Now this bag kind of gives you an idea and again this gun to let everybody know we're not sure the exacts but because That's it right. comes in different configurations. That's right. This could be a little bit smaller. The stock could be different. Maybe Absolutely. Foldable, right? foldable, collapsing stock. The forearm could be longer or shorter. There are a number of configurations for this. Let's get what we can in the bag because again Aaron Alexis had the weaponry in bag and this is a pretty good size duffel bag does not fit so that leads us to believe it probably folded to collapse a little bit smaller and we will put what we can again in the bag and then here's our one screw so he walks with the bag and I'll be very careful with this but just to give you an idea I mean is it heavy sure a little bit and again this would have been covered as this goes along but yeah I can hold it pretty I can be pretty nimble with this. That's I can right. walk in and I act like I own the place and I walk in. He goes to a restroom and then he begins to assemble this gun. So let's do that and I'm sure it's going to be uh, as you assemble just as quick as you disassemble it. So let's go through that exercise here. As we again are giving everybody just a sense of how fast this could have all went down. What's going on in his mind as he walks in. He has the proper identification to get into the building. Goes into the restroom and you see Greg here. He's assembling that quick. Three, again, simple, right? That's ready to go. Again, again, you see how fast that could, that, that could go down. And we know what happened after that. Now, again, another thing. I'm not a gun enthusiast myself, but I was able to handle this weapon as, as Greg walked me through it and just how fast you can get comfortable with a weapon like this. Again, we're finding out a very common weapon that a lot of people have. Either they use it for hunting. Maybe they even use it for home safety. So let's watch that. Grab the forearm and the buttstock, put it to your shoulder. Okay. Like so? That's correct. Okay. Push forward to close the bolt. All right. As you pull the trigger, the front end will release and you'll be able to slide it back. Right now it's locked. You cannot slide it back. Correct. Okay, All right. So I fire. And again. That's it. That's the first time I've ever held a weapon like this. And I was doing it fairly quickly. That's right. And you uh, much, much faster, much more depth. But again. Wow. Pretty quick, the, the, the comfort level, and I'm, I'm sure if you're like a Greg and you're, you're trained, how adept you can be with something like that. One other question that many people have is we hear, okay, 12 gauge. This is what, that's a shell for a 12 gauge and inside, and you're going to see this here, if, if I can get, get these out of here, basically they're pellets. And it's going to create a spray. And Greg's going to explain that. It's, we're not talking about a 9 millimeter bullet like this, uh, but the spray that you get with the buckshot is what it's called with a 12 gauge shotgun. So let's watch that. We're talking about a 12 gauge shotgun. So that is this or this. That's right. Correct? It's the diameter of the, the shotgun shell and the barrel. Okay. And then what comes out of a 12 gauge, if it is buckshot, it's more something like that. These are the pellets that right. came out. Right? Those are the lead pellets. There are 12 of them in that shot. Okay. And with that, if we believe, and again, not exact, but if we believe that this is what was fired, what kind of 
range or spray are we talking? Because this is not a single bullet like a nine millimeter here, but more of a, of a buckshot. So That's talk right. to me about that. Well, it spreads over distance. Um, the inside of the barrel is smooth, and it, once it leaves the barrel, the projectiles are a small cloud. Five yards away, that they spread out to a cloud that's about five inches in diameter, seven inches in diameter. Uh, but 15 yards away, that's more, more like uh, 18 inches in diameter. And then 25 yards, which is a very long shot for a shotgun, 25 to 30 inches in diameter. That's a fairly good sized cloud. Okay, so again, just to get everybody on, on the same page, is that as something like this is fired versus this is, this, this is a single shot, this is the nine millimeter. But if you pull this out, and you pointed this out to me a moment ago, if we get a shot of this, the diameter, it's not a lot of difference, right? That's right, they're very close in diameter, the same thing, a double lot buck versus a nine millimeter. And again, and here it is, Th this is what we have here, the ammunition for you to look at, uh, just a, a bullet nine millimeter, and, and there again, the buckshot with these thin pellets that are, that are fairly large. You know, then that takes us back to the witness accounts that we, that we heard right after this tragedy began to unfold, uh, and we heard that the two people that saw Aaron Alexis with the rifle. He sees them, points the rifle at them, shoots and fires, but thankfully for them, he fired high. So that's, again, it's all coming together as we research and ask the questions, what kind of uh, ammunition was used, what was fired. He fires high and he gets some of that buckshot, a little bit of that spray uh, go above their heads and they were able to get out of there and tell their story. That's not the case at all. Still number one, as we ask all these questions, the victims and their families, much more than all of the questions we have, but that is part of it to learn from this as we move forward and still so many questions concerning this. Much more news now coming up. Keep it right here.